Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Africa Asia Discussions. Uh, so today we are having an interesting discussion about government spending with a focus on Kenyan government spending and I'm with Mutuma. Mutuma say hi. Uh, hello, my name is Edwin. I write uh, on macroeconomic policies, Forex and Web 3.2. Uh, on my site, uh, you can find that the, at econversation.com. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll share the link uh, to Edwin's website. And so today we're having this discussion, which is quite interesting, uh, because we'll be speaking on matters, government spending, and it's really a beginning of the conversation on what is government spending, then we'll go on to speak about where the government obtains money for spending, and then we'll make a few more remarks. And in this case, we will start with, uh, we'll be focusing on the Kenyan government, but then the principles will apply to any government, really. So, um, I'll let Mutuma go by, you know, highlighting, like, what is government spending, uh, what are the types of government spending, and then we will carry it on from there. Thank you. Uh, so in uh, any economy, uh, basically, we have a couple of components that do make up the um, economic equation, the growth equation, GDP. Uh, we have consumption, we have uh, investment, we have government spending, and then we have net exports. So today, uh, as mentioned earlier, we will be um, speaking on government spending. So um, you might ask uh, where uh, the government uh, obtains money for spending. I believe we all pay a fair share of taxes, uh, which ideally uh, should be able to uh, fully fund government spending. But uh, if you look around, uh, this is not what happens all the time. Because when we have uh, the government spending more than uh, it's collecting in taxes, uh, which basically is the revenue of the government, main source of revenue, uh, we have something we call budget deficit or a government deficit the government has to find ways to like cover the deficit because if it's spending more than it's collecting uh, we have a shortfall of the money that should actually be spent by the government so um, a couple of areas where the government could be uh, getting the money to cover the deficit uh, one could be foreign aid uh, and grants uh, i believe christine can tell us some of uh, challenges maybe or uh, benefits of uh, foreign aid and grants yeah okay thanks for that and uh, to pick it up from add a few things also uh, from where edwin started and stopped uh, on like the spending in this case we are spend we are speaking about recurrent expenditure and we are speaking about capital expenditure so before we even go to like uh, speak about like foreign aid and what the issues are with that is that you'll be wondering this money that you get from foreign aid, for instance, well, what will you use it for? So you can use it as a recurrent expenditure. So in this sense, it means you take the money as the government of Kenya and then use it to pay salaries and wages of public servants. So anyone who works for parastatus, the government takes that money to fund uh, the salaries. And then also, they can use the money like to transfer payments for like uh, the payments that are being made in Kenya for like the old people, uh, and also the promises you've had, like in the campaigns, that someone will get a stipend every month for unemployment. So we can get foreign aid, for instance, and then that money which we get, the government takes it to give people who are unemployed. And but then also you can use it uh, for capital expenditure, to, you know, like uh, to develop projects. We'll speak a bit more about that. But to go back to like now, is it wise? to take foreign aid, for instance, and use it to pay people who are unemployed or to give like any 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 kind of uh, recurrent expenditure, for instance, or even capital expenditure. And now the thing is that with foreign aid, it has conditions, yeah? So you find like if they are, you're getting foreign aid from the US, it comes with conditions. Like you'll be told you need to spend this money in certain ways and then can be withdrawn if you piss off whoever is giving you the money. I mean, they, have the, they are controlling the bank. So if you piss them off, you know, they would, you hear things like you're, you're not a democratic state or if there's a diplomatic 
issue between the two countries, they can withdraw the foreign aid. So foreign aid is a very shaky ground to be in. And then also it's aid. It's very discretionary on the person who is giving you. And they can sometimes you hear uh, government saying that they'll give you a grant, they will withdraw it and they'll do all the all, all such kinds of things. So yeah, so that's the additional comments I wanted to make. I will let Mutuma go on to speak about like other sources of money for the government to spend. On that note, uh, we could actually have uh, the question, for example, in the government uh, making, uh, giving transfer payments, how do they actually um, do an analysis of who should actually get this money? Um, should the money that we collect actually go to such transfer payments? Or should uh, how, how do we go about establishing uh, a baseline for who should get the transfer payments and who shouldn't? Because uh, a government deficit, it is okay to have a deficit. But uh, at what point of the business cycle are you having this deficit? Uh, is it during an inflationary gap or is it during a recessionary gap? If it is during an inflationary gap whereby your economy is expanding, employment is rising, inflation is falling, uh, then you might uh, actually find uh, that uh, having a deficit in an inflationary gap, there, are, there is an underlying problem, like it's a red flag because uh, from there, you're actually going to something we call structural deficit. I think in subsequent podcasts, we'll speak in depth about such topics as those. But uh, on to uh, where the government obtains money for spending. Aside from foreign aid, we have uh, borrowing might present itself in three ways. So um, the government could borrow to f- uh, finance its spending uh, from its central bank. Uh, ideally, this should be a case. The central bank and um, the executive, the legislature should all be independent of each other. Uh, but we'll see, as we'll see later, we'll see that um, this basically isn't the, the case uh, often. Uh, another way the government could borrow is um, domestic borrowing within uh, the country. And then lastly, we have um, external borrowing, where you borrow from foreign countries. And we'll see which among uh, all this uh, government borrowing is actually the best and uh, why shouldn't we do one over the other or why is one uh, actually considered uglier than any other. So I believe Christine can take it up from take here. It up, yeah. Okay, uh, so I think also on the borrowing, if we could start going in depth about uh, the government borrowing from the central bank, you wonder how this is done. Well, to say this is done not just by Kenya, countries worldwide do this. What you do is that you go to the central bank and you tell them print for us more money. Uh, so central bank print for us uh, money, uh, the notes. And then what you do is that we owe you as a central bank. And then now what happens is that the government takes the money that's, that has been printed and then it has an, uh, an IOU. Uh, written to the central bank and then what the government needs to do is that it needs to look for places to get the money to pay the central bank so again uh, the it doesn't end with just borrowing from the central bank especially because if you just print currency and put it in the economy without having any value to it you're just going to, you're getting into a problem because of inflation and your the money that you're printing has no value backing it so now what you do is that you can borrow from the central bank but you need to be able to get money as a government to pay back the central bank. And now that's why the central bank borrowing in and of itself is not an end. So you take the money that has been printed, you can go to the domestic market and tell the domestic market, you know what, give us money through a government bond that we are going to issue to you, for instance, then we can use it to pay back the central bank. Or you can go to an external person and tell them, give us money uh, which now you take and give to your central bank. So you owe another person so that you can pay back the central bank. And it's mainly because you really don't want to have money out printed, which you cannot, which you cannot be able to have any value to it. So you can borrow quickly from the central bank, almost like a drawdown on your account, and then quickly go to the domestic market or to, to the external, to the external lenders. For you to for you to recover the money and give it back to the central bank. Of course, there's a lot of questions that come with this, and I think we will uh, do future discussions. But I will let Mutuma speak a bit about uh, what is bad about external external borrowing, 
and especially when you compare it to the domestic borrowing. So earlier on, I had stated that uh, in an inflationary gap, the economy is growing, but unemployment is uh, rising. Sorry, uh, the unemployment is supposed to be falling, and uh, the inflation rising. So this is a trade-off question. Uh, on to uh, the point about external borrowing versus domestic borrowing. Okay, um, external borrowing poses uh, its fair share of uh, challenge. In my opinion, the best form of borrowing is domestic borrowing because you're borrowing in your currency. Uh, you might be wondering, uh, okay, uh, so why is borrowing uh, domestically better than that? Or why is borrowing in your own currency better than in a foreign currency? Um, when you borrow uh, in foreign currency, we have something that is called uh, exchange rate risk. This basically means uh, if the currency in which you have borrowed is actually getting stronger and your currency is getting weaker, uh, we actually have uh, interest rates that you actually pay on the, on the amount that was lent to you. So um, the amount will keep on rising as the uh, currency gets on getting stronger. For example, uh, in terms of Kenya, the Kenya shilling has been uh, falling against the US dollar. We have borrowed so much. Well, it's not yet 100% of our GDP, but the interest rates that we are going to pay uh, for the loan that we have are actually rising as the currency uh, gets weaker. So uh, we are not pegged on uh, a certain amount of interest that is going to be paid. Uh, it will keep on rising and or falling uh, based on the uh, fluctuations in the exchange rates. So um, in my opinion, uh, I think that borrowing domestically actually offers uh, a better I don't want to call it incentive, but uh, it's actually better than borrowing externally from uh, foreign countries and actually borrowing uh, in, a, in, a, in a foreign currency, per se. Okay, uh, yes, and I agree with what Mutuma is saying. And to add on to that or to expound a bit is that imagine like as the, uh, like the pound is gaining value against the shilling. That gain that the pound has over the shilling is money that the Kenyan government has to fund from its pocket to give to the to give to the UK if that's where they got the money from. So in a, and that's not the interest. This is purely coming from the forex exchange gains and losses. In addition to that, there is the interest. So again, uh, foreign borrowing has that challenge. But also in addition to the foreign uh, to the forex exchange uh, losses that are pot that potentially could arise from it is also the fact that uh, like currently the lenders, uh, international external lenders, they have leverage over you. In terms of if it's like China, for instance, you borrow from them, you, you don't repay this amount, they will be at liberty to take the collateral that you gave. So for instance, like the case in Uganda, where China is considering or has already uh, start taking steps to take the Entebbe airport, that's a, that comes directly from borrowing externally, where you give one of your assets uh, to the lender as collateral for it. But then also when it comes to like the IMF and like the US and they are unlikely to take your airport or to take your assets. Uh, it's a different strategy from what China does. But then also what happens with that is that you get like a, a downgrade in your credit credit rating. And then there's also a lot of pressure coming from uh, coming from like your external lender and the thing to say is that when someone is always controlling how much what to do with you and the money that you owe them it means that they are likely to be the ones calling the shots on decisions that you make so even if it's like foreign policy such things will be affected uh by uh, the money that you owe these people so uh, and also when it comes to domestic lending i i don't know how many kenyans know this but this actually occurs on a regular basis either through mkiba or government will announce and say that it's floating a bond or it's like they, they want this money and then they'll call upon people and it has been very creative in the Kenyan sense because it has it's not the big people only who can lend to the government they have broken it down so that you can lend as low as 5,000 shillings to the government and people like that because the return is guaranteed uh, for the domestic uh, lenders to the government because it's a safe investment you know like the government is going to look for ways to plug in uh, the debt if they need to so uh, I will ask Mutuma to take it over. 
system here. Uh, so uh, you might be wondering why, uh, for example, uh, are we talking about uh, interest payments and uh, why is it bad? Uh, well, technically, some of the amounts that actually go into uh, loan repayments are funds that could be channeled into 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 development projects so basically investments so um, earlier on we had talked about types of government spending where christine talked about recurrent expenditure and capital expenditure uh, for example in kenya there has been a question of um, how are the loans that you're obtaining are uh, being used uh, recently we have had um, a lot of money being loaned to us uh, from outside that have been used for capital expenditure. For example, the construction of uh, the, ongo the ongoing construction of the Nairobi Expressway. Uh, and you might ask, uh, there has been um, controversy in the same because uh, some people are asking who is actually going uh, to benefit from uh, the construction of the expressway. Well, uh, we cannot answer to that until after it's completed. Uh, other people are questioning uh, when are we actually going to recoup the amount and actually this development project actually uh, become an investment to us well uh, again uh, still wait to see after its completion and uh, i think afterwards consequently the government needs to carry out a cost benefit analysis because yes we are talking about a development project in this uh, expressway but the question is who is actually going to benefit from the same uh, is it actually going to like uh, collect uh, the revenue is uh, are we actually going to be able to repay uh, the loan that came uh, with the construction because uh, we are supposed to be investing into assets uh, development projects are supposed to be assets uh, in as much as we borrowed them we actually have a repayment uh, plan but you see with ineffective debt management we could actually uh, come from borrowing for development projects to actually uh, trying to manage and contain a debt crisis and is this something that we really want uh, much as uh, it is a development project uh, what is the benefit and uh, at what cost are we actually uh, getting the, the, the development because you can't tell me that uh, we are borrowing yes we are borrowing and then we invested that money into something and uh, this thing is uh, not going to give us the benefits that we, we, we want I mean as a country uh, we are already plagued by debt and uh, the government should be investing into uh, investments that could actually uh, see us getting more money to like um, repay the loans for example, just recently they refused to, uh, the government has uh, withheld um, the terms that were used in the uh, financing of the SGR, if I'm not wrong. And uh, as Kenyans were, uh, Kenyans were worried sick and uh, asking questions such as why is a public uh, development project uh, the terms for its investment uh, being withheld from the citizens uh, these are questions that the government will come out and answer and say okay um, these are the terms that are involved in this uh, this is what uh, was uh, given as collateral uh, this is how long it will take us uh, to recoup uh, the amount that was actually um, put into the project I could also ask well uh, it was actually a good idea having a standard gauge railway and having the train uh, transport our cargo but there are questions such as the towns that have actually developed from the business that was coming in from the trailers uh, there was employment opportunities what is going to happen to the people that were in the logistic business from uh, transportation of cargo from Mombasa to the inland to inland Kenya so you 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 have to like sit down and do a cost benefit analysis to see uh, this is actually going to impact the economy in this way this is actually going to help everyone uh, that is involved because at the end of the day we want economic growth but at the same time we want economic growth that is uh, coming with lower unemployment levels and at least a manageable rate of inflation because it has to uh, it's a trade of one or the other so i'll give uh, christine yeah to add more comments and especially uh, from what mutuma is saying on the like the sgr you see, when the government says we are developing this kind of project, then you should ask, are there industries that will be having cargo to transport? The, the infrastructure that you set up should be set up with, the, with a view or with information saying that this is the number of users that we expect. If it's going to be like for people transport the SGR, for instance, ask 
how many people are likely to be using this and then based on that information then you can do projections and see at what point will you break even at what point will you start getting a return from this investment it, it's the same way when you're starting your own small business you look at who are my customers where will i get this money from how will i how will I uh, then fund it based on this information? Of course, the government is not a money-making entity, and therefore sometimes the government has to do things that don't give back any money. But when that's the case, then the cost also should take that into account and ask yourself, then where are we going to get money to fund this project which has no return? And definitely the government should be able to offer things that uh, ordinary citizens cannot get at a high cost so maybe subsidize some of the services but then also then consider where you get the money for so i think at this point uh, we can quickly highlight who who decides on what the money that the government gets will be spent on like the government has gotten foreign aid who decides and it's it's at this point where we were saying legislature executive all these functions of the government should be independent of each other and so that now it should not be that the executive uses the money that it has in its hands as a tool to control the other the other arms of the government. So that now I decide that I am unhappy with, for instance, the judiciary. Therefore, I will not allocate money to them. Or as a government, I, I or the executive for that matter, I decide that I prefer more agricultural uh agricultural kind of investment and therefore I'll invest more into that or to decide that I come from a certain area uh, which in the Kenyan context uh, a certain community which does these kinds of things and therefore I'll invest more in those kinds of things essentially that the policy on how to spend it needs to be solid it needs to be one of, that can be supported it needs to be one that also can as long-term benefits so that if you're looking at it you're not investing into something because you're annoyed at one government department or the, over the other or you're you want to support a certain communities or certain projects over others because at the end of the day when this executive gets out and the next one comes they will come with their own agenda and now the problem is that there will always be people influencing using using the money that has been given to Kenya for their own agenda. And that's a problem because spending should ideally be focused on like the whole benefit of the whole country and to give a return that's, uh, that, uh, that's going to be perpetually beneficial to the generations to come. I think we will be coming to a close, so I'll let Mutuma make his closing remarks and then we will end it. It was nice having such a discussion uh, basically on uh, government spending. Christine was so fiery in that uh, last uh, segment where she was talking about the government uh, using uh, not being independent, using the legislature to control the, 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 the other forms of government that one or the other arm of government feels uh, they are not okay with. Uh, recently, the, 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 the government of Kenya actually cut... Um, the, the amount of money that it releases to the judiciary uh, and this was uh, due maybe to a public spat between um, the president and uh, the then uh, chief justice so um, uh, the basic uh, basically uh, government expenditure and taxation are fiscal policy tools that the government uses uh, to control uh, economic growth and uh, the problem with the fiscal policy tools is that they are implemented not by people who have the interest of the country uh, at heart, but people that are actually pursuing their own agenda. When I'm in parliament, uh, I want to uh, force government spending into something that I will benefit from. Uh, not because uh, it is actually going to help everyone, but because I'm actually going to benefit from such spending from the government. And because... I am in such a, uh, a position as that there is a conflict of interest that uh, arises. Uh, how should uh, we then deal with such uh, a shortcoming in fiscal policy making? Should we uh, do away with it? Uh, should we actually set um, a bar of some sort for people that are actually going to be in elective posts? Uh, all these are things that uh, we are going to consider. Other than that, uh, it was nice uh, interacting, it was nice uh, learning, and it was nice sharing. So uh, that was my time. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone. And we have more talks with Motuma. He'll come by whenever he would like uh, to speak more. And you can follow uh, 
the postings and his thoughts on these topics uh, from a site which we will share on the link below. Thank you.